uh, June 10th, 2003. My name is Mary Raza. I'm the museum curator for the National Park Service, and I'm here today with uh, Loretta Riley Hoffman, uh, who was a WAC stationed here in 1944. Correct. And we are going to do some uh, an oral history interview today um, because she's the only WAC I've ever met. Uh, especially stationed here. Uh, I have a particular interest in the Women's Army Corps because I do some reenacting in that and I am very excited to have you here today. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> we are sitting on the front porch of Barracks 25, which was the home of the Women's Army Corps uh, during their time here in World War II. Okay, my first question is, where and when were you born? I was born in Brooklyn, New York. In February 14th, 1943. And were you schooled there as well? Yes, I went to uh, Catholic elementary school and public high school, Madison High School. Um, did you go to college before your military service? No, I went to college afterwards on the GI Bill. Okay. Um, do you have any relatives or friends before you joined up that were in the military? Just cousins who had been drafted and that sort of thing. Did you know much about the Army before you joined it? No. I, absolutely nothing about the Women's Army. But uh, I really knew nothing about it. My husband, my dad was in the Army in World War I. And this was the reason I chose the Army. But uh, other than that, no. Why did you join? There was a war on. If I, had, if I had been a man, I would have been in, so. What was your reaction of your parents? My, I was afraid to ask my father because the way I was brought up, if I had asked him before I was old enough to go in and he said no, that would mean I couldn't go when I was older. So I waited until my 21st birthday. And I went to work and lunchtime I went down and enlisted and went home and told them. <laughs> was he quite shocked? He was thrilled. Oh. I, I was amazed because my dad was the, the old school, you know, and girls stay home and do this. And he, he was thrilled. Well, that's good. Um, where did you go for basic training? Fort Oglethorpe in Georgia. Must have been hot down there. Well, it was in February. Oh, what year? 1944. Okay. And uh, it was lovely. I remember the first Sunday I was there, sitting outside in the sun. It was just day like today. I had washed my hair and I was drying it in the sun, writing letters to my family up in the snowy New York City, telling them how lucky it was I was to be down there. It was beautiful, yeah. Um, and was Fort Hancock your first assignment? Yes, it was. Mm-hmm finished basic and came up here okay. with one other girl. Um, what type of job did you have before you joined? Clerical, my, what, I forget what they called it now, the the army number, whatever they gave you to oh. be your classification number. Yeah. 005, I think it was just general clerk. Well, before you joined, what were, what type of job did you have? General clerk. Oh, okay. I, I worked for Western Electric and just... Okay. Just um, did your civilian job pay more than the military? Well, my civilian job paid me, I think I was getting $18 a week, and I had to pay $10 a week home for board, and it cost me $2 a week to go back and forth to work. So I ended up with more money here. Oh, that was good. What did you think of the uniform? I was thrilled to death. I had no complaints with it, really. Mm -hmm. Did it I, fit properly? Mine fit all right. My father complained the first time I went home, tell him to give you smaller shoes. They're too big. <laughs> um, and so what they issued you two of each item, two shirts? As I recall, that's, I, there may have been more than two shirts. But you know, like you, you dress uniform, you had two. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we had two fatigue dresses. And all the underwear, I don't remember how much we were issued. Which was all olive drab. All olive drab uh, rayon. Tricot knit rayon. And it got wet and it just dragged. <laughs> and about and you got nylons. We did get nylons for, for going out. Yeah. Okay. But mm -hmm. what, uh, regularly, would you so wear cotton stockings on bases? Well, I worked in post headquarters, so I wore nylon. Oh, okay. It had to look nice. Sure. <laughs> So you worked in that building right next door? Right, yes. Barracks it was 24 very nice going was... Uh, the in the rain, it was lovely. Nice and close. You could run in between the raindrops. Um, how did the... How was the food? Well, 
unfortunately I've had a reputation all my life for saying where is the food and when do we eat. I had no complaints. Okay, that's good. Um, how did the male soldiers treat you? For the most part they were great. They, uh, I, I think it was very different because everyone had the same idea. We have to go in, there's a war on, and we do it the best we can. The only thing I did run into was the one soldier that I was relieving for active duty. He gave me a couple of bad steers on how to handle people, but I learned the hard way. <laughs> but other than that, I had no, no problems. And you were allowed to socialize with enlisted men? Oh, McDonald's. yes, yes. Yeah. That's how I met my husband. Which I'll ask you about in a little bit. Um, did you ever notice any discipline problems with the women? I was never, if there were any, I think they were, had a tendency to keep them quiet. Mm -hmm. And I think if you worked in the office, like the, the sergeant in charge of the WAC detachment, you were aware of them. But other than that, we didn't hear of any. And you just heard of, uh, you knew that there was one WAC that got pregnant? And one was WAC, I don't even know if she was pregnant, mm -hmm. but she was caught necking oh. with the, a soldier down behind the carpool. And she was immediately sent to another base. Really? I didn't even see her again. Uh, were promotions fair among the wax? I don't know. Because when I was here, I, w I came as a buck private and I left as a buck private. And uh, so, and to tell the truth, I never expected to be anything but. Right. Because I figured, well, what can I do? You know, I, I'm not helping to win the war, I'm just here. If they need me, I'm here to do it. So. Um. Did you get any medical care while you were here? Yes, I did. You think that they uh, were a good doctor? Oh, they were fine, yeah. Uh, did you want to go overseas? I did, but unfortunately I didn't know that when you were sent to the Pentagon, you stayed there. Oh, okay. Um, did the other women that you served with have similar educational backgrounds? Were so a lot of them college graduates? For the most part, we were all high school graduates. And I don't recall, I think a woman had to be a high school graduate yes. in order to join, but a man didn't. Right. And uh, I met a few who went on to OCS mm -hmm. who had gone to college, but that was very few. And uh, what did you like most about the Women's Army Corps? It was exciting. I got away from home. Mm -hmm. You know, my father was very strict. I lived in Brooklyn, New York. I wasn't allowed to go into Manhattan except to go to work. Mm -hmm. Friend of mine I worked with was being married. She lived in Greenwich Village. My father said I couldn't go to the wedding because it was in Greenwich Village. Now, I was, I was, you don't expect that in New York, but it was like that you for most of my friends. Like and I got some independence, yeah. Did uh, the skills that you learned while you were in the military help you later on? Well, I think the most I learned as far as skills were, were people skills. Mm -hmm. And they did help, yes. Now I have some other questions. Uh, when did you start being involved at Fort Hancock? What were your dates here? I came here, I don't know the exact date, but it was in April of 1944. And um, I left here in October of 1944. Uh, did you know anything about Fort Hancock before you were assigned here? Never heard of it. Um, did you know the type of job that you were going to be assigned to? I had no idea. Okay. You just showed up? I just showed up and they said, you go over there and do that work. Now, did you come on the train, the bus? We came on the train to uh, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. I guess it was to Newark. Mm -hmm. And I then we got, I think it was the Jersey Central Railroad. Yes. And uh, an Army vehicle mm -hmm. met us. I don't remember what it was. But it was just two of us. It may have been a car. I don't remember. And it brought you out to the mm -hmm. port. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, what was the first thing that they, you did when you came here? Did they send you right to your barracks? I think so, yes, because as I recall, it was at night. Mm -hmm. It was dark, and I didn't even know what it looked like until the next day. Uh, and uh, the next day, I was given my assignment. Uh, what was your, your, so your rank while you were here was private first Private. Class? No, private. Oh, private, okay. Um, and the unit or department you worked for was the headquarters? I worked for uh, special services, and that was housed in the headquarters buildings. Okay. <laughs> um, 
Were there ever alerts of potential enemy attacks while you were here? Not that we know of. There may well have been, I don't know. I do remember, if I could just throw something in, I wasn't here, but while my husband was here, he said that there was a soldier on guard duty on the beach, and he lost a foot. His foot froze. And he had, they didn't have the equipment to keep in contact the way they do now. Right. And uh, he stayed there until his time was up and he lost his foot. Um, when you were working, did you work with both civilians and military? Yes. The civilians were mostly from the Red Cross. And um, the fact that my husband was also affiliated with special services, he was the most big projectionist. And we, um, we worked with the setting up shows to come to the base. And it was a very, it really was interesting, things I had no idea existed. Were you here when Judy Garland performed here? No, I wasn't. You missed that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so your typical day was you got up and... It was just really like work. any other day. You get up and you have your breakfast and you... We had exercises in the morning. Mm -hmm. And you go to work and you have lunch and you go back to work and you're finished at the end of the, at 5 o'clock. And then after you came home, you ate and then would be able to relax yeah, in the yeah, day room? Yeah, we had a, a nice sized day room. And we sit and relax, and some of them play cards. I didn't, because I didn't know how. I was never learned. And uh, we sat and talked and wrote letters. Okay. Um, did you go to the uh, service club, the theater, the dances? Well, I went to the theater because I got a job working in the theater. What I started, well, I started as an usher. Mm -hmm. And I liked it because it got paid at night. It was a separate and apart from your military job. And uh, then I became the cashier, and then I became the manager. And as manager, I got like five dollars a night, so it was good. Okay. Um, did you go to dances out here? No. Any any sporting? I don't know if they. Ha no. Mm -hmm. well, see, for one thing, they had a boat they called the Q boat, mm -hmm. and every weekend I could go home, mm -hmm. unless I for some reason was on duty. Mm -hmm. But um, we get the boat. Right down here, wherever it would be, I don't right know, over that way, over that way. Yeah. I don't think you worked for it. And um, take us into the Battery in Manhattan, and get on the subway and go visit my family and come back Sunday night. Okay. So I was, I was very lucky. So you, so you, probably, you didn't really spend much time here on weekends at all? No, I didn't. Um, did, did you ever go to uh, church services out here? Or was that because you were home? You know? I was home, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I did it, go into the chapel. And uh, it was very, very small, as I recall. It seemed to me they had two, and one was smaller, the other was smaller. Right. Right. <laughs> um, did you ever go to the beach while you were here? No. I didn't even own a bathing suit when I was here. Uh, did you ever see any servants or minorities while you were here? Nope. And you know, I felt terrible late and I realized I didn't even notice the fact that there were no black women with us. Mm -hmm. You would just grew up in an atmosphere where that's the way it was. Right. And later when I began to realize what was going on in the world, I felt so guilty. Uh, was this a fun or boring place to be working? Well, when you're 21, everything's fun. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Did anything especially humorous occur while you were here? Oh, I can't think of anything offhand. One thing, I wasn't here, but my husband was telling me Edgar Bergen came. Mm -hmm. And Edgar Bergen came in to entertain the troops, and he acted as if the world was here to wait on him. He said to my husband, who was a very independent thinker, Sergeant, get my bags. And my husband said, I'm not your maid, your butler, you go get them yourself. <laughs> um, the other thing I wanted to ask was, uh, how did you meet your husband? And special services office. I, the first day I was here, I met him, and uh, he scared the death out of me. <laughs> he was, he was oh, a big man, and um, he was just very deep. He talked, and he you heard him coming, you know. But uh, he was really very nice, and he, I guess that's why I enjoyed playing Hancock, because after the show, because he was running the movies. We would get on an army bus and go into Highland to a diner that was there and have something to eat and come back on the bus when they came back. 
So you were here for six months, and then you uh, you were reassigned to the Pentagon. Yes. And, but you were able to keep in touch. Oh with yeah, we kept in touch. Yeah. And then you were married after the war. Yes, we were married in 1946. Um, then I have some specific questions I'd like to ask while we take a walk into the barracks. And uh, if you want to put this in there, we'll okay, you want to. You just sit there in your pocket if you like. Yeah. If you Oh, I have. Oh, thank you. I'm a little apprehensive on the steps. Okay. Well, that's understood. Thank you. Thank you. are welcome. That was good. I practice with my dad. I don't <laughs> feel old until I go to move. I was looking at him before. And nothing seemed familiar. It's okay. It's bright enough. Okay. Um. Inside the south end of Barracks 25, uh, which according to the Post newspaper, the Sandhook Foghorn, was where the day room was. It's been chopped up into offices since then. Uh, but this would, do you remember coming in the day room? And I, I've been trying to orient myself. <laughs> and of course, with all the partitions that have been put up, nothing looks familiar. Mm -hmm. But I do remember the day room was a large room. Mm -hmm. And would they typically have a radio and chairs? And we had radios like and that. chairs and tables, and we'd sit and talk and relax. And in the day room, was where we had our exercises. Oh, so everybody got together. Yeah. And you think that, how many people do you think that were stationed Well, when I was here, I would say maybe 30. But I could be wrong, you know. Okay. That's what um, I remember. Well, we're gonna, do you remember the, the bathrooms? Did they still no. have urinals in them when you were here? No. Okay. No, they didn't, not when I was here. We did have one small room that was really a bathroom mm -hmm. with a tub in it. Mm -hmm. And we took turns getting to use it. We had showers, you know, but it, we had to take turns getting to use the tub. Right. And that was nice. Do you remember going into and the basement? Um, in the basement, they had the wash basement. tubs. Oh, really? I must have been down there then. If they had they wash said tubs that wash tubs and ironing boards yeah, were installed. I must have been down there. But then, in fact, I was going home every week. You I may have taken it home. Much. Sure. Yeah. Well, that was lucky. <laughs> no, I had to help myself there. Oh, OK. <laughs> Um, what we're going to do is walk upstairs to the bunk room and we'll discuss a little bit about uh, where you slept. If I can recall. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. 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 Uh, we're in one of the large barracks rooms uh, where Loretta most likely slept. And uh, when you were in here, you had did you have a wooden bunk? I don't think so, but I don't know. I'm inclined to think they were metal. Okay. And... Um, did you they were set up about they, like this. What did they give you? Did they give you a foot we had a locker, locker and a wall locker? And a wall locker, yes. You had to have the wall locker for the, uh, you know, the clothes that you had to hang. Mm -hmm. Because they weren't permanent press then, you know. Once you ironed them, you took care of them. <laughs> so you think that most of the, the members that you were stationed with were, would have been in one side or maybe? Well, one side or the other, yeah. Um, did the officer probably had a private room? Oh, yeah. And do you think the sergeants also had private rooms? I think they did downstairs. Um, so the room was not crowded then? Oh, no. It was it was very nice. As I, as I recall, I was like the third or fourth one from the wall. So you think you're in the middle or against? In the middle. Oh, okay. Did and they sleep head to toe, or was it heads on one side? I think it was pretty much this everybody facing east or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not for any specific reason, but we all slept in the same direction. Of course, when the beds were made, they had to be uniform. Right. So all the heads were. And when you left for the weekend, did you have to do anything special with your bunk? Well, just make it up and make sure it was clean and, you know. OK. Do you have anything else that you would like to say while we're no, in? No, I'm just, I feel so terrible. I can remember so little. But it's how many years ago? 59 years ago? Something like that. You know, it's a couple of weeks. And uh, it's so good to see it, and, and I just wish my husband were here could see it. Well, well we did come back one time when the children were small, mm -hmm. and we got up to the main gate, and they said, well, you can't go unless you have a pass or whatever. It was still and military. And my husband said, 
They wouldn't let me out of here for four years, and now they won't let me in. So the guard said, you were stationed here? And he said, yes, we both were. So he let us come in. He just, just don't take any pictures. <laughs> that was it. Great security. Okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. I, I really enjoyed this. it. This has been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, there you go. It's been fun this for me. This is the end thank of the you. interview. <laughs>